in this lecture we will try to go into the other historical findings that has shaped the field of molecular biology in the last lecture we have seen the importance of griffith experiment and the phenomena of the transformation however griffith was unable to identify what is the biological agent that may have caused the transformation so this led to again starting of a series of experiments by avery mcleod and mccarty these experiments were conducted mainly to prove what is the transforming principle of the griffith experiment so by their series of experiments they have finally discovered that transforming principle was a nucleic acid in nature that is it is a biomolecule of nucleic acid in nature and it is made up of specific pentose sugar called as a deoxy ribose sugar so the conclusion of this experiment is the fundamental unit of the transforming principles is essentially a dna molecule so the dna is acting as a hereditary material the next finding are related with rna as a genetic material is there any chance to for an rna to act as a genetic material this was proved by a uh, list of scientists namely gerer and sherman showed that rna can act as a genetic material you all aware that rna serves as a genetic material in certain viruses even the virus that is the uh, covid causing corona virus is basically an rna virus okay so the rna as a genetic material was proved by heins frankel conrad as well as b siegel they have taken an experiment or conducted an experiment by using two different kinds of viruses that is the tobacco mosaic virus and holmes ribgrass virus through which they have proved rna alone is acting as a genetic material the next historical finding that shaped molecular biology is a hershey and chase experiment alfred hershey and martha chase has conducted certain experiments by using bacteriophage as a model and they finally identified that the hereditary information is injected into the bacteria by the bacteriophage and the specified new generation of the bacteriophage are all found to possess dna alone as a genetic material and not of protein so this paved the way for the other important horizontal gene transfer phenomena that is the transduction the next is the concept of prokaryote and eukaryote that is also having a relation there with the molecular biology this term is first coined by chatham in the year 1930 after several decades a distinguishable characteristic features even from the molecular point of view was proposed by stanier and van neel between these two organisms that is prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes first we look at a definition there a molecular biology based definition there for the prokaryotes they refers to cells without nucleus so it is called as a nucleon bacterial cells nucleus is called as a nucleon it is it should not be called as a nucleus and nuclear membrane so these cells don't have a nucleus and nuclear membrane and they are involved in the co transcriptional translation on their main chromosome that is transcription and translation will be taking place at a stretch on the main chromosome you can just look at this image that is in the left hand side in a prokaryotic cell it is having only nucleoid this nucleoid is subjected for transcription while the transcription is taking place translation is taking so transcription and translation are coupled together there in a prokaryotic organism so after a co transcriptional translation there in the main chromosome that particular mrna molecule are immediately getting translated there into protein you can able to see a nascent protein is formed there from the mrna molecule so this is a molecular biology based definition there for the prokaryotic cell however eukaryotic cell is a different one eukaryotic cells found to possess a defined nucleus and a nuclear membrane further the transcription and translation are temporally and spatially separated that is the transcription and translation takes place in different times and in different space they do not involve translation of nascent transcripts 
of their main chromosomes into proteins. First, we look at the point related with how the transcription and translation are temporally and spatially separated. So, if you look at there into the eukaryotic cells, you can able to see the transcription is taking place in one particular place. This is the place in which the transcription is taking place. As a result, you are getting that mRNA. However, translation is taking place in a different place. So, this is taking place inside the nucleus and this is taking place outside the nucleus. So, they have been separated in space and they have been separated there in the time. That is, both the things are not happening together. So, as a result, when these things are formed, they won't be immediately translated. Say, if you closely look at here, the pre-transcript is being further subjected for modification or processing. That is called as a mRNA processing. After the initial processing of the mRNA transcripts, the translation process happens. If we look back into the, our previous lectures, you can able to best understand how a pre-mRNA will be subjected there for a processing. So, after processing, the intervening intron sequence are removed and only a exon containing mRNA will be formed. That particular mRNA is the one that have been shown here in the green color. That mRNA will be processed there in the eukaryotic organisms and then the proteins will be formed. In the history of molecular biology, next important finding is the one given by Erwin Chargaff. He was a person who was given the composition of the DNA. That is, what is the ratio at which the nitrogenous bases, mainly adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine has been present there in the DNA. So, this has ended in a rule called as a Chargaff rules, which states that DNA from any cell of an organism should have a 1 is to 1 ratio of a pyrimidine and purine bases. The details of this thing we will separately see in another lecture. The second Chargaff rule states that more specifically, the amount of guanine is equal to cytosine and the amount of adenine is equal to thymine. That is AT is equal to GC. This pattern is found in both the strands of the DNA molecule. That is in the double strands of the DNA molecule. Next important discovery that has shaped molecular biology is the identifying the structure of the DNA. That is elucidating the three dimensional structure of the DNA molecule. So, in order to go into the three dimensional structure, an X-ray diffraction analysis was first carried out by Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. They have predicted some kind of a structure in which the DNA may be present. However, the double helix model for the DNA was first proposed by Watson. And they said that the DNA molecule might be a simple double helix with the basis of two strands that has been pointing inward towards each other forming a base pairing. That is the base pairing is existing between the A and T and G and C. The next important finding there in molecular biology is the semi-conservative replication model of the DNA molecule. DNA molecules first they have thought that they may be conservatively replicating or dispersively replicating. However, due to the efforts of Misselson and Stahl by using radioisotopes of nitrogen, they have obtained a conclusive evidence that DNA is replicating inside the living cells as a semi-conservative replication model. The next finding is related to molecular coach postulate. These coach postulates have been provided by Stanley Falco in the year 1988. So, this is something equivalent to that of the postulate that have been provided by. However, here the postulates are proposed from the standpoint of molecular basis. First postulate, the phenotype or property under investigation should be associated with a pathogenic member of a genus or pathogenic strains of a particular living strain species. The specific inactivation of the gene or genes associated with the suspected virulent strain should lead to a measurable loss in the pathogenicity or virulence of that particular pathogen. The third one, Virulence of the organism with the inactivated gene must be always lesser than that of an unaltered or a wild strain of the organism. So, this has need to be proved in an appropriate animal model. 
and finally the reversion or allelic replacement of the mutated gene should lead to restoration of pathogenicity in a particular organism so in other words reintroduction of the gene that is the particular gene responsible for a pathogenic activity should again make the microbe to restore their virulence and exhibit their pathogenicity the last historical finding is related with the molecular structure of the ribosome in the year 2009 nobel prize in chemistry was awarded jointly to the three persons namely venkatraman ramakrishnan thomas a c and ada yonath mainly to conducting a lot of research there related to ribosomes and to understand the molecular or atomic structure of the ribosomes and their functioning the understanding of these ribosomes and their functioning will be more useful in designing some kind of an antibiotics since the ribosomes of a prokaryote and ribosomes of eukaryote are differing there based on the swedberg's coefficient these details are all we will see in the next lectures